How's it growing? This is thousand head kale. The leaves are known to get enormous. And so I'm curious to see how this grows here in South Florida in my fall and winter garden. And then some of the tomatoes that I'll be growing this cool season. Sometimes life throws us things that throw us off of our plans. And that sure happened to me. You know, whether it could be COVID related or, uh, you know, an injury, a car accident, whatever it may be, I'm sure you'll be able to relate. So I normally have my fall and winter garden completely all planted by now. And I just started last weekend and we're in the middle of October as I'm recording this. In this episode, you're gonna be getting a garden tour. And in normal circumstances, I would be embarrassed to show my garden at this point, but I really think you should see this because I have had to let my garden grow on autopilot. I haven't been able to get out there much at all. And, and what happened? Well, life happened in both a negative sense and a positive sense. And you're gonna see the good, bad, and the ugly, mostly good. I am so behind on my garden projects this year. While I'm still so grateful for my new job, at the same time, it was, uh, it was, I was starting this job at a very, very busy time for this department. And it was like jumping on a high speed moving train. It was exhilarating, challenging, and rewarding, all those things. Working late nights sometimes. But the big thing is recently, I injured my back and I'm not going to go into detail, but if you've ever had sciatic nerve pain, like shooting pain down the leg, it's not fun. And I, I think you probably have a very good idea of what I was going through. There were some days when I could hardly walk. So let alone even think about going out to the garden. So this is why I've had to let my garden grow on autopilot. So what does autopilot mean? Fortunately, we had plenty of rain lately. Also a thing that really helped is I have a lot of perennials out there like Katuk and things that are well established that are not going to be hurting if they don't get attention every day. Now, I mentioned the Katuk. Katuk is not drought tolerant until it gets established, but the Katuk that I have is well established. It's out in the sun. Uh, the younger Katuk is in the shade and that's another thing by the way hello katuk grows in the shade it's a good thing to know especially for me where i don't have a whole lot of garden space uh, where everything gets full sun this time of year it doesn't it gets it's on the north side of the house and it gets a lot of shade from the house in the fall and winter months now it's not so easy to let a garden grow on autopilot when you have young seedlings and they're in that young tender stage. Fortunately, I still had most of my fall and winter garden under grow lights indoors. I had some up here. Some are still in the laundry room under the grow lights in there. I like starting the tour at the Carambola tree, AKA star fruit. This tree I started from a seed from a fruit our neighbor across the street gave us. It's starting to set its fall fruit. This chocolate pudding fruit, also known as black sapote, this is the uh, Excalibur variety, which I got from Excalibur Nursery in Lake Worth. I can't wait for it to start setting fruit, hopefully this coming year. I'm so happy to see dragonflies around here because I'm a mosquito magnet. One of these guys can eat hundreds of mosquitoes every day. Here we have Lago spinach together with the variegated Cuban oregano. I'm not sure what variety these bananas are, but across the way from these are a much taller variety called Brazilian red. A cluster of bananas stock is called a mat, and this mat of bananas is setting fruit for the first time. It's a very small cluster, but I can't wait to taste these. I'm overdue for pruning my mango tree, my pride and joy, which I started from seed. Then I grafted the Irwin variety to it, but we can hardly tell the difference between the unknown rootstock variety 
and Irwin. So I want to graft a more exotic mango to it. She decided to take a break from producing fruit this past summer, which they are known to do occasionally. We have a young Chiquette avocado tree, which hasn't set fruit yet, but it should be soon. Then just outside the fence from the avocado is a hummingbird tree. This tree is known to be medicinal. I had the young leaves, flowers, and young pods to my green smoothies. I bought this Barbados cherry tree in a three gallon pot two years ago. One of these cherries contains about 80.5 milligrams of vitamin C. Compare that to a typical orange, which only has about 51 milligrams. And our Barbados cherries are producing like crazy. Look at that. It's been three years since I've grown papayas. So I'm excited to see that this red Indian papaya is starting to produce fruit. If you saw my papaya episode, this is not Priscilla. We'll see her in a minute. In the back here is where my main edible garden is. We have passion fruit, chitrofa nut, yucca, lots of yucca. By the way, I have a couple of chitrofa nut trees for sale. This one is starting to produce again. Look how exotic the python snake blossoms are. These crunchy snake pods are delicious, just raw. I've mentioned this variety of the South Sea Salad tree in past episodes, but I have another similar variety that has more decorative leaves. Next to that is a small Moringa tree with the Python snake vine. And across the path, let's visit Priscilla from the papaya episode. My strongest papaya plant is a female. You grow, girl. Now it's time for me to get in my garden clothes and get Priscilla planted. She's happy and her flowers are getting bigger, so she'll start producing soon. This pigeon pea has gotten so big. It's not producing this time of year, but it's great for chop and drop or nitrogen for the compost. Then we have lipia, one of my favorite perennial herbs. I like this mixed with holy basil for my nighttime tea. See those orange bugs? Those are nasty aphids. But look what showed up. That bigger bug is a ladybug larva. They're known to have a voracious appetite. One of those can eat dozens of aphids in one day, as well as other bugs such as scale. I like to make the most of my small garden space. So I mounted this planter on a fence where I'm growing Lagos spinach. Lagos flowers are beautiful and it reseeds itself. Here's one of my chaya bushes. I'm so impressed with this plant as a spinach replacement. It's so much easier to grow here than spinach. It thrives with very little care. And when cooked, it can be eaten like spinach. It's more nutritious than spinach and I like the taste and texture of chaya better. I love my Moringa trees, but I'm so overdue for pruning these too. And when I do, I use it for both chop and drop and in the compost. This is a dwarf variety of Moringa, and yet it towers over the house. It's recommended to keep Moringa cut back to four or five feet high. I love my tumbler compost systems. In the coming year, I'll start a series on composting. Cranberry hibiscus is such a delicious plant. If you got one of these from me that dies during the winter before it produces seeds, please let me know because these often don't survive through the cool season. From one delicious plant to another, Katuk tastes like peanuts. I have a variegated variety and this is my main Katuk bush. The leaves and flowers, the fruit are all edible. Although my Katuk has not produced fruit yet. Here are some of the plants that I have for sale. But before we go any further, I want to introduce you to Kiki. She's my garden girl. This is Kiki, hello, say, say hello Kiki. Hi baby girl, you're so cute. Isn't she beautiful? Kiki knows she's not allowed in my garden beds. She's usually very good about that. How do I keep her out? First, she has her own sandbox as a great alternative and she loves it. Secondly, when I replant a bed and before the plants fill in, I use tomato cages to make it a little less appealing to both Kiki and the raccoons that come to visit. I also spray peppermint oil on the boxes as a raccoon deterrent. Back to the tour. I'm a month and a half late, but I finally got this first bed planted. So I'm behind on pruning trees. I'm behind on my big annual fall mulching. I'm behind on planting my beds. But you say, this doesn't look so bad.
the solarizing plastic gave up long ago and the seminal pumpkin vines took it over. They covered the corner bed and sunk their roots into it. This past weekend, I cleaned that up and replanted that corner bed as well. I'll replant seminal pumpkins next spring. In the fall, I use screens on top of tomato cages to filter the sunlight. This also keeps the soil from drying out so quickly under the direct sun. In the spring, I put the screens back on to extend the cool season garden. I know a shade cloth might look nicer, but this does the job. I use this woody compost to mulch the beds once all the seedlings are at least a couple of inches tall so I don't bury them. If you got something out of this video, please do me a huge favor. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, click on that bell so that you'll be notified when I upload videos in the future, and let's grow together.